This video is for every person that would say, Kenny, you take the Bible too serious. Kenny, chill. You are a radical. You, you're just extreme. Like, I understand that, you know, we should love God, but, you know, what you're doing is not love. It's, you're consumed with hate and just the law. And you're just like a, the Pharisees or something, Kenny. Like, man, what's wrong with you? Why do you just preach all this negative stuff? Let me tell you. Number one, as I said in other videos, when I am out, you know, witnessing to the lost. I don't, all I'm doing is telling them the gospel. It's not negative. I mean, it starts off negative because I tell them that they're sinners and that they're on their way to hell. And some people don't respond well to that. But, you know, I end up telling them that, you know, the, the gift of God is, you know, eternal life through our, through our Lord. So I just tell them, you know, how they can receive it. So that's that. But when I do these videos, you know, most of the time these videos are just to clear up a lot of false doctrines and a lot of misconstrued doctrines, like especially regarding the law. Because, you know, when you study it and you have an honest opinion, you know, you got to admit that, you know, that God hates sodomites. You know, he burns them and all throughout the Bible, he's commanding for their destruction, even in the New Testament. So you can't sit here and just pretend like God is, you know, just no, I, I don't, like he just would hang out with him or something like this demeanor that people have. That's that. And then, you know, I was reading and I don't know where it's at. I was sitting here trying to think about exactly where it's at in the scripture, but, you know, teaches it the bible talks about i think it was paul writing to timothy and he said there's some that will be teachers of the law and i'm gonna tell you something we're not under the law the bible says we're under grace not under the law you know um jesus christ nailed the carnal ordinances on the cross but you know the law is written in our hearts the bible says if you walk in the spirit against such there is no law and that the law is for ungodly men right the law is for ungodly men and evil wicked men that's what the word teaches so you know if you walk in the spirit there is no law and that's what we're commanded to do you know he tells us to walk in the spirit uh, i think that's galatians 5 so you know, at the same time, though, we still, the law is not bad. The, the, the um, commandment is good and just, and the law is good. But, you know, people just like to choose which one. They'll say, you know, we're not under the law, so they just want to throw the whole thing out. You don't throw away the law. It's God's law. I mean, come on now. You're, you're tweaking. But, you know, if you walk in the spirit, you know, like the Bible says, I give, okay, like I preach. And one of my, you know, and this is the stuff, like, when I did my support Verity Baptist Church video, you already know, God haters came out the woodworks. But then a lot of watered down, like, you know, liberal minded Christians came up and they were just like, you know, rejecting the idea that we should, you know, put to death sodomites and adulterers, you know, and I did another video too addressing that. So I'm not going to go into it, but, you know, I, I, it's not for God's people. You know, God's people, when we're walking in the spirit, we're not going to commit adultery. You see how he says the law is for an ungodly person. So me, I'm not offended when he says put to death adulterers or sodomites because I have no intention of ever doing such wickedness. You know, I that's just the fear of God right there. And you know what? I think it's because I established the law, like it says in Romans 331, that I have this mentality. I don't reject the law. I don't think that it's void. He says, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. And therefore, the fear of God is 
in my heart, you know, because he says put to death adulterers. He said that. That's what God said. He spoke that. And he's the one that said put to death a man who would lay with another man and a man who would lay with a beast or a woman. And he said all that stuff, you know, and you can act like it's not there. You could pretend like he doesn't still, um, like he's changed on it. God doesn't change. You know, he said it and it's, it's good. Jesus Christ, he came to fulfill, not abolish. He said, think not that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. He said, I came to fulfill. So he fulfilled, you know, the, the dietary laws, you know, which I believe according to scripture that, you know, that was just the picture of, you know, Jew and Gentile. And now that Christ has come, there is no difference, you know, because in the Old Testament, you know, the Gentiles, the heathen nations were unclean to the Jews and you know the Pharisees took it to a whole new level where they wouldn't even eat with Gentiles that's not in the scriptures but you know they were God's holy nation separated so but now Jesus Christ has come you know there is no Jew or Gentile you know and God said it in the um I don't remember which book but he said what God hath cleansed call not thou unclean or uncommon so, you know, the dietary laws and he fulfilled the carnal ordinances like the feast days and, you know, the sacrifices and whatnot. God fulfilled all that. And um, as far as like, you know, the thou shalt not steal, he, that doesn't mean we can steal now, you know. So I'm not going to get into all that, but I just wanted to really just throw that out there real quick. But this video is just for people who just think you. You know, I go too hard with it. You know, people will say, you know, you're a radical. You're an extremist. Well, God is an extremist. God's word is extreme. It's radical. You know, if I'm going to imitate Jesus Christ, then that's what I'll be. Whatever you want to call me. It's interesting, though. You know, the people make it seem like if you acted like the Lord Jesus Christ, that people would just love you. But that's not true. You have to remember, they crucified Jesus Christ. They crucified him. They put him on a cross, nailed him to a cross. They beat him up. The Bible says his visage, you know, his face was so marred, unlike any man, and that he was beaten up to the point where you couldn't even recognize him. You know, does that sound like someone that was going around just like, love, love, love? You know, you got to keep this in mind. Jesus Christ is the word. He is God in the flesh. And, you know, he's the same God that rained down fire and brimstone on Sodom. People, for some reason, just have this, this belief that, you know, that's not Jesus Christ. But, you know, it's another Jesus. And a lot of the times it's another gospel. But this won't be long. You know, I'm going hard because I got to. You know, it's just that simple. I have to. God has called me to preach his gospel. And then he's also called me to preach the word. And to preach it when it's popular and unpopular, when it's in season, out of season. To reprove and rebuke and keep the brethren in remembrance, you know. I I know he's called me to do it. So, you know, I don't go to a watered down liberal church. I don't, I'm not, you know, consumed and overtaken by false doctrine. I'm not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. I'm established. I have a lot of doctrines nailed down. And, you know, and a lot of people won't. You, they just will never accept it. That's just how it's always been. You know, look at all the prophets. Look at Jesus Christ himself. Killed, afflicted. The apostles were afflicted. They were, like, hungry. They were the scum of the earth, you know? And for some reason, in 2016, people just believe this Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland Christianity. And it's infiltrated. This T.D. Jakes Christianity. I saw this one church, it said a Christ missionary something, and it had like a, a not a, I was about to say, um, it had a, a tent outside, and on the tent it said, uh, accomplish your dreams, live out your dreams, and I said to myself, where is that in the Bible? As a matter of fact, God addressed dreams in the Bible, and he talked about it in Jeremiah 23, about how these prophets say, I dream, I dream, my dreams, this has nothing to do with God has nothing to do with the word it has nothing to do with the truth and um it's a loving thing for me to expose that and we should always 
expose that. But I'm going to wrap it up, man. It's just I'll never stop until I die. It's just I'm going to teach my wife. I'm going to teach my children. Because I know it's the truth and I know it's love. And I'm not ashamed, you know. I'm really not ashamed at all whatsoever. I honestly, I have, I want people to acknowledge the truth and to um, believe the truth. And then I want to see I want to see people's lives change, but I know what it takes. It takes the word. It's powerful. The word will change your life. He'll make you fishers of men just like me. That's what God said. He said, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. He said that to Peter. He said that to a lot of other men before me. And, you know, I'm just following after, you know, Christ. That's what he said, do. And if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and come after me. And it's it's the good life. It's a joyful life. It's a blessed life. And like I said, I'm just not ashamed. And I feel like a lot of people are ashamed to say certain things that's in the word because they don't want to be frowned upon. Obviously, I got, you know, people that just probably want nothing to do with me, family members and friends. Because, you know, they say, oh, man, you just keep a Jesus freak, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you're a Jesus freak. I'm trying to think of all this stuff. Um, you're radical. Um, in a cult, you know what I'm saying, a cult, um, it's just ridiculous, man, it's really ridiculous, and it goes to show you the times we're in, and Jesus rebuked people, he said, have you not read, have you not read, how read is thou, and you know, these people don't read, you know, if you're a person that says, oh man, you, you take the Bible too serious, I mean, have you read it, just read it like I have, read it over and over and over again, just keep reading it, and if you, if you don't believe it, of course I'm extreme, but if you believe it, it's like, how am I extreme in comparison to the Bible? If you're reading it, you should see the extremity in it. It's very evident. It's very clear that this is not a game. This is not a joke. God's not playing. And people are really dying and burning forever in hell. And they need to be saved. And they need to know the truth. And God's word is going to be exalted. And he's going to be exalted in the earth. I'm just going to exalt him now. I'll do it now. In the midst of persecution or whatever. But, you know, what else can I say? I'm not afraid. Um, these people will call you radical and extreme. I mean, are you reading the Bible? If you read it yourself, you'll see, you know, that I'm not making this up. It's not my opinion. So, if you read it, then it's, that's the thing. I don't think they read it. I think they just read the proverb or they go to their preacher and they listen to their preaching and they go off what they've been taught and they can't be corrected, you know, because I have believed false doctrine in the past, too. And, you know, when I first got corrected on it, you know, it humbled me. I was like, whoa, I was wrong about that. OK, there is a time to hate. I see. OK, that makes sense. You know, I believe the scripture, the Holy Spirit guided me into all truth. But these people, they don't read. They just want to have their own Christianity that makes them feel comfortable. They go to church so they can feel comfortable with themselves. It has nothing to do with the truth. It has nothing to do with God. It has nothing to do with being a soldier of Jesus Christ. It's all to do with their own pride and their own comfort. But the Holy Spirit is my comforter. And he's real. And God is real. And, you know, if I got to suffer, I'll suffer. If I go to, to, my, to my grave, or if I die, or before, if Jesus Christ comes in the clouds, whatever, I'm going to just keep preaching the word. And whatever happens, 